Okay. Right, guys, can you all hear me? Can I get your attention now? You everyone got your stickers on? Very good, very good, okay. So, for any of you who don't know, can I just get your attention, guys? For any of you who don't know, my name is Wayne O'Connor. I think we, some of us, we met last year. Thank you. Was it good last year? Oh, God, okay. Thankfully, hopefully we can be good again this year. Um, I'm going to be telling you a story today. Uh, before I start, though, did I tell you about the great news that I got last year? Had it happened when I had you guys? No. I've had this amazing thing happen to me just like, just like a, almost a year ago now. And you know what it is? Myself and my wife have had our first baby. And she's absolutely beautiful. She's absolutely beautiful. So I am, I am really happy. I'm walking around all the time like this. I'm like, woohoo, like cloud nine walking around because I'm like so happy. Who here's got like a baby brother, baby sister? Yeah, Sammy, yeah. Is it a good thing? Or is it crying all the time? Crying all the time? No. Well, well, ever since we've had this baby, I mean, I've completely changed. The person you met last year, I'm very different now. Because, I don't know about you, but when you walk along, you know, you know your typical guy, you know your typical guy, you're, we're kind of like this. Yeah, man, it's crack. Yeah, playing the football, yeah, yeah, yeah. Playing the old Call of Duty, yeah, yeah, you know crack, yeah. But now I've completely changed. You know what it is? Because now I have my baby, and you know what happens? I'm more like this. <laughs> and I'm not messing for absolutely no reason on occasion. We were like giving her a bath there like a couple of months ago. And for no reason whatsoever, I started crying. I was looking at her and just was going, <laughs> she's so beautiful. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. And something else has happened since we've had her. Since we've had her, I began realizing it made me think about the first time that she's seeing everything. I mean, it's the first time that she's seeing the sky. The first time that she's like, we've got two dogs. The first time she sees, uh, here's, here's our dogs. The first time she feels the wind on her face. I mean, that must be amazing. And it began to make me think about the first time that I had a pencil, a pencil. Now, when I was very young, my mom would probably have put me, you know, sat me down and at some point she would have given me the pen. Now, do you know how that works? Do you know how it works? Okay. You look, you're, you look a bit unsure. Okay, so you get the pencil, you get the paper, and then you make a mark with the pencil on the paper. Got me? Got me? We're good? You got it? You got it? Okay. So you get this. So I, was, I would have been put down on the floor like this. My mum would have turned around and she would have like, given me a pencil, sat me on the floor, and she would have like, let me draw, you know? And I would have made marks. And she'd like turn around and she'd be doing her dishes, you know, doing the dishes in the house. She'd be like this. Doing it like this. And she'd check back every few minutes to make sure I was okay. She'd go like this. You, you right there, Wayne? Uh, all right, thank you. You right there, Wayne? Uh, you went, oh! <laughs> Because there I was, up against the wall of the, ha of the kitchen, going like this with the pencil. <laughs> and my dad, my dad used to come down. My dad used to work for Irish Rail. And I don't know what you guys, what are you like? I don't know what you guys are like, but when I get up in the morning, I'm not the nicest person to meet because I am walking around like a zombie. I'm like this. My dad used to come down, he'd come down to go to work and he'd be walking into the kitchen like this and I'd be sat in the high chair, you know the high chair? And I'd be sitting there going, eh. Yeah, we just sat in the high chair. And my dad had come in, and he'd come in like this, and he'd go over to get a, a mug, you know, he'd get a, a mug down for his tea, and then he'd go up and he'd get his plate, and he'd take his plate down, and he'd go, ah! Oh! Because he'd look at the plate, and there I was after writing all over the plate, making some horrible face. It was crazy kind of stuff. And all this kind of stuff was happening. And then one day, something else happened. One day, I was there minding my business, enjoying being a baby, enjoying being a child, you know, thinking this is a great life, I'll just get to play and do, do lots, of, lots of stuff. And then one day, my mum came over and she goes, put this on. And I'm looking at it going, what's this? And I have to put on a jumper, and the jumper's got like a logo up here. And then she tells me, put on these. And I have to put on this kind of a pants thing, and I'm like, what's, what's going on here? What's this about? And she tells me, now, today we're going to go to school. It's your first day at school. And I was like, huh? Yes, we're going to take you to school. I, I don't want to go to school. But yes, you do. School is going to be great. We, no, I don't want to go to school. I just want to draw. I don't want to go to school. And she would have tucked me out into saying and led me into the school. 
And as you walked into school, she would have introduced me to all the other people in the class, you know, all the other people, and she would have gone, now, these are all going to be your new friends. And no, I don't like him. And no, no, I don't like him. No. No, 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 don't say that. No, they're lovely, they're lovely. No, oh, no, I don't like her at all. No, 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 look at her. No, I don't like her. No, 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 stop it, wait. No, and, oh, and these are going to be your teachers. They're going to fill you with all the knowledge in the world. They're going to give you all the stuff. Eh. No, I don't like him at all. No, I don't like her. No, 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 no. Sh I'm sorry, sir. And next thing, they would have put you down and given you a book. A book. A book. And I had the book put down in front of me, and I would have been like, what's this about? Said, now we're going to teach you how to read. And I'd be like, I was looking at the book, and I was turning it this way and that way, and I'm going, what? <laughs> and I opened the book out, and I get a pencil, and I go, <laughs> and I make it destroy the book. And I used to destroy books, but at some point, at some point, moving on just quickly, at some point I actually began to realize that I actually liked reading. And we began to read stories. And I used to t read stories about Cook Cullen. Have you heard of Cook Cullen? You heard him last year. We told the story last year. Cook Cullen, the brown bull of Cooley and all this kind of stuff. We would hear about Irish legends and all these kinds of things. And also legends from around the world, from different parts of the world. Um, Asia and, and uh, England, uh, stories of King Arthur and Robin Hood. You heard of these people? King Arthur, Robin Hood and all these kind of things. So what I want to do is I'm going to tell you a story that's actually from China. And before we start, I just want to check that you're all okay. Are you all right? You're all right? You're okay? Not, you're, you're okay? Yeah, yeah. Everyone's, you're, you're not okay. What's wrong? Oh, I didn't tell you. Yeah, her name is Sophie. Sophie. Maybe she might end up going to your school. I don't know. Right. So we're going to start this off, and it starts off very simply. The story that we have starts off with a mountain. And at the bottom of the mountain, there is a forest. And running through the forest, there is a river. And on the river, there is a village. And in the village, there are people, villagers. And they were very, very nice people, and they just lived a very simple life. They would grow vegetables in their gardens, they would fish from the river, there was a shepherd, he didn't have a lot of sheep, but he had a few sheep and he would look after the sheep in the mountain, they might have maybe one cow, you know, they did all these things, simple kind of a life that they led, they weren't rich, but they were happy, and one day the shepherd was up on the mountain, the shepherd from the place, he was up on the mountain, he had his shepherd stick and he had his few sheep, and he was sitting up on top of the mountain and watching the day, and it had been a lovely day, it was a lovely country, it was really good weather, and he was up there on the top of the mountain like this, and he said, hold on, I'm going to go down and get some tea. So he got up, he grabbed the stick, and he began to walk down to the village to get the tea. And as he was walking down through the field, suddenly he stopped. And he said, hold on, before I go, I better count them. I better make sure I've got all my sheep. So he went up, and he only five, so he counted them. He was like, one, two, three, four, five. Cool. And then he turned around, and he walked down to the village. And he, except he actually stopped. You ever get that thing where you're, like, leaving your house, and you're not sure if you... You know, you get that... You know, you get that moment where you're like, you're like, oh, did I, did I pack that book? Did I, did I, did I, you know, did I bring that sports gear, or whatever I'm bringing? You know, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? He had one of those moments. He was like literally walking out. He was walking down, and he stopped. He says, Jeez, did, did I, did I count that? I did I count? That? I better count him again. Hold on, hold on. And he went like this. He says, one, two, three, four. Cool. And it, he turned back again. He says, hold on, there's something up here. And he was just. You guys give me a hand here. He just counted. He was like, he said there was. And that was it. And he was it. Like, and he said, hold on a minute. There's something. Well, let's do that again. Okay. Roar! Out of the forest, out of the wood came this huge hand with kind of bluish skin and bits of rock on the back of it. And the hand came in like this. And this huge figure came in like this. A massive form. He was a giant. A huge kind of thing came in like this. And there was rock just hanging off his chin and all this stuff. And he came in. And of course, you know what it is. It was a Trolls Gilda. And that, you know what a Trolls Gilda is, don't you? What? You don't know what a Trolls Gilda is? What are you teaching them in school? You didn't teach. Trolls Gilda. This is important stuff to know in life. You know what it... Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I know what the problem is. The problem is... Uh, 
I, I'm using the old Danish word for it, Trollsgilde. It's actually, in English, it translates to troll. You know what a troll is, don't you? Okay, sorry, 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 my fault. Anyway, this huge troll came out of the forest and lifted up one of the sheep, one of the last sheep. He lifted him up like this, and the sheep was like, Bleh! and he put him behind him like this, and he came out like this, and the shepherd looked up. And, of course, the shepherd had a stick that he was meant to use to kind of, you know, scare away wolves or whatever, except he looked up and he went, and he ran down into the village and as he ran through the village all the villagers came out of their homes and they were like what's going on who's going on why is he running down the street and next when they looked up and they saw this huge troll walking down the middle of the street like this boom 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 and as he walked through suddenly he saw the lovely garden where they planted all the villagers vegetables and he reached down and he scooped them all up into his pocket and put them down into the bag he was carrying then he came forward and he saw the one cow that they had and he lifted the cow and the cow was like Mur? and he put the cow into the bag then he came forward and he saw all the fish that were on the table and he took the fish all and put them in the bag and then he came out like this and all the villagers were like but please 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 troll out but that's our food how will we live we don't have food i don't care i don't care it's all mine now i'm taking it all but what will we eat what will we eat if there's no food no fish no vegetables no no cotton what will we eat you can eat the grass yes Plus for you forever. And the villagers were like, what, 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 what? And the troll turned around and he disappeared into the forest. <laughs> and that's the way it became in the village. Every day they'd go out and they'd fish, they'd try plant a few vegetables, they'd try, try get some food ready, you know, and try to live their lives. But every day or every few days the troll would come down and he would steal all their food. So the years passed, and in the village, there was also a couple. They were an older kind of a couple. And in their life, they had had a very good life, but they were sad because of one thing. They had never had a child. They'd always wanted a child, but you know, just they'd never had a child. So they just, one day, the, the old lady, she was out in the river, and she was washing her clothes. And as she's washing her clothes like this, she looked over. And she saw, over there, she saw something coming down the river, floating down the river, and she was like, at first she thought it must be a log or a twig or something going down the river. But it, it no, it was definitely not a twig. It was kind of a circular sort of a thing. And she, she kind of began to wade out into the water a bit. And she saw it there, and she reached, she reached out, and she, she thought maybe it must be a rock floating down the river, but sure, rocks don't float. So she was like, what's this? She reached out, and as she reached out, she put her hand down on it, and as she put her hand on it, it kind of bobbed a little bit, and it was kind of soft, and she picked it up, and she realized what she was holding was a gigantic peach. A peach. She held it above her head, and she was like, this is the biggest peach I've ever seen in my life. But then she thought to herself, this is great. This peach will feed my entire village for, for a month. I'm going to bring this back. So she put it onto her shoulder and she began carrying it back to the village. And she was very happy. And as she walked back to the village, suddenly she heard a noise coming from a nearby bush. She heard a noise like this. It was... Ah, ah, ah. So she went over to the bush. Went over. And she reached in behind the bush. And there was nothing there. But it was definitely, and she heard another sound. Again, she heard a wah, wah. And she thought, she thought maybe it's coming from the top of that tree. So she went over and she climbed up the tree and no, there was nothing there. And she was like, where's the noise? Wah, 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 wah. So she put the peach down. She put her hands together like this. Actually, can you do this? Put your hands together like this. Okay, and one, two, three. <laughs> Oh, hold on, we got a problem. Get your hands together, give me a hand, come on. Cheney Mac, all right. One, two, three. Come on, guys. What are you doing? Come on, put some muscle into it. Oh. Okay, hold on, everyone, never do this with your arms for a second. I think everyone's muscles are a bit weak. Okay, get them up like this. Okay, okay, let's do this for the fingers. Do this for the fingers. Okay, let's try again. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah, yeah, a bit more of that. Yeah, 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 you're almost there. Oh my God, he's going to go purple. He's turning into a berry. And it popped open. And as it popped open, oh my God, you can stop now. He's going to pass out. As it popped open, what do you think he saw in the middle of the beach? A baby, a baby boy. 
and she was absolutely delighted. She thought all her prayers had been answered. So she reached in and she picked up the baby boy and he looked back at her like this. Uh, and she was like, oh. She went back to her husband and says, all our prayers have been answered. We have a baby, a baby boy. And she decided there and then that they were going to call the boy Momotoro. Momotoro in their language. Momotoro translates as the boy from the peach. So the years would pass and Momotoro grew up to be a very fine boy. And about seven years later, he was out and he decided to go fishing. And he was throwing his fishing line out in the water when suddenly the, the line went ding. And he was like, oh, huh. And it was very big, whatever this fish. And he, he pulled and he pulled and, and oh, this huge fish came out. I mean, this fish was like from here to you. It was massive. It came out and it flopped on the rocks. And he was like, oh my God, I've caught the biggest fish ever. And he went forward and he kind of threw it over his shoulder and he began bringing it back to the village because this fish would of course feed their village for, you know, for, for months. And of course, the only thing that the villagers were eating for these last few years was grass. Grass, because the troll was still coming and stealing all their food. So he threw it on his shoulder like this and he began walking back to the village. He looked over his shoulder, something held the end of the fish. And as he looked over his shoulder, what do you think he saw? The troll's hand had reached out of the forest and held the tail fin of the fish. And the troll went, yes, this looks very tasty. I'll be taking this. And the boy went, no, no, I caught that. It's, it's mine. Shut up, you little insect. I will crush you like a bug. This fish is mine, mine. And he threw it over his shoulder and Momotoro stood there and he, was, he didn't know what to do. And, and the creature turned around, the troll turned around and headed back to his cave up at the top of the mountain. And Momotoro sat there and he was upset. And next, but this happened. You ever get, you ever get really, come on, you've all got really upset at some point. You know, you get angry over something. Well, his chest suddenly went like this. Yeah, like that, actually. He went like this. And he turned around and he ran back down into the village and he ran into his home. And he ran past his mother, who was in the kitchen of their home, and ran over to a, to a shelf where they had all their cutlery and their plates and their saucepans and all these things. And he reached up and he grabbed down a saucepan and he put it on his head like this. And the mother looked at him and says, Momotoro, why, why are you putting a saucepan on your head? And Momotoro didn't even listen to her. He turned around and he ran out into their garden and there was a tree growing in the garden and there was a low branch and he grabbed the low branch and he kind of swung on it till it broke. And he held the branch like this. And she came out and says, Momotoro, why are you waving a branch around like this and wearing a saucepan on your head? And Momotoro looked at her and, she, and, he, and he, he said, Mother, this is not a saucepan. This is my helmet. And this is not a branch. This is my sword. What? Momotoro, why, why are you wearing these? Why, why do you say these things? I am going to go up to the top of the mountain. I am going to defeat the troll. And she went, no, you're, you're, you're only seven years old. You cannot do this. You, it's only a saucepan. It's only a branch. But Momotoro would not listen. He went out into the village. And all the villagers, the villagers began to pop out. And they saw this boy, the seven-year-old boy, walking down the street with a saucepan on his head and a branch in his hand. And as they saw him walking by, they were like, what's going on? Why is Momotoro wearing a saucepan on his head and a branch in his hand? And his mother came up and said, he's going to try and defeat the troll. He says the saucepan is a helmet and the branch is a sword. And the villagers were like, he's what? He's only seven. And they all came running out. And now her husband came along and he was like, what? And they were all pleading with Momotoro. They were all saying, Momotoro, don't go. Don't go, Momotoro. You're only seven years old. You cannot do this. Actually, can you all do this with me? Can everyone go, Momotoro, don't go? Oh, you have to do it like you mean it, like you're pleading. Everyone, try shout it as loud as you can. Got all... That's good. Right, put your hands up like this. Put your hands up like this, like you're pleading. Momotoro, don't go! Try it again, try it again, try it again. But, but, he was not listening. Momotoro was determined. He turned off, he walked into the bushes, and he disappeared into the forest. And all the villagers stood there and they watched him disappear and they looked at each other and the parents looked at each other and they looked at their friends, their neighbors and they all realized one thing. This would be the last time that they would ever see Momotoro. 
Now, a short while later, a little bit further up the road, Momotoro was walking, and he was practicing with his, his sword. He was like this, and he was checking his helmet, his helmet, and putting it on his head like this. And he was walking along like this, when suddenly the path passed along what seemed to be a small stream. And as he was walking along the, the edge of the small stream, he suddenly heard a voice, a small voice. And the voice said, Hello! And Momotoro stopped. What was the source of this voice? And he turned around and he looked and he couldn't see anyone. And he, he looked and again he heard the voice again and it said, Hello! And he's like, What? What? Who? What? And he walked over and suddenly he saw in the middle of the stream, on its, you know, on its back, with its feet sticking like this, and its little pincher clicking like this, he saw a small crab. And the crab looked up at him and said, Hello! And Momotoro was like a talking crab, and the, you know, he went over and says, Yes, uh, 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 can, can I help you? Oh, yes, please. If you could help me, it would be very, very, very good. I've had a very awful, awful morning. It's been an awful morning. Terrible, terrible. And Momotoro's like, what happened? What happened, uh, Mr. Crab? What happened to you? And the crab looked up and says, oh, I was moving along, minding my own business. I was doing my own business. Nothing was happening. And in Adela Wood, you know what happened? The big troll come out. He called, the big troll. You know the troll? He come out to the big forest, and he looked at me, and he say, he say to me, he said to me, hey, I say, hello. He said, hey, do you play football? And I was like, huh? I'm a crab, I never play football. And he says, well, I'm going to show you how to play football. And I was like, okay, okay, show me how to play football. And you know what he did? Yeah, he kicked me. He said, you the football. He kicked me. And now I go upside down and I cannot get back on my feet again. It's been an awful morning. And Momo Torres says, well, well I, I can help you if you want. The crab said, oh, yes, please, it would be great if you could help me a little bit. So he went over and he put the crab back on its feet. And the crab kind of looked at him and went, oh, thank you, boy. What is your name? My, my, my name is Momotoro. Thank you, Momotoro. I very, very much appreciate your help. Well, good day to you. And the crab went away. And Momotoro walked on. He was feeling good after helping the crab. And he, as he walked on, suddenly he came out across a, a place where there was rocks and stuff, you know. And the pat was going through all the boulders. And next minute he heard a voice, another voice, a small voice. And the voice said, do you hear that? Okay, you've got to listen to this. I know there's a lot of background there. It said, what did it say? Actually, yes, you've got amazing hearing, amazing, oh my God, amazing ears. It was, it was another voice saying hello. And as he leaned into the rocks and the boulders, he saw what was saying hello. There was a tiny little bee, bigger than your, you know, no bigger than your, your, uh, your curl or thing. And it was sitting in there. And the bee had a pair of goggles on his head like this. And he had a little mustache like this, kind of curved at the end. And the bee looked over him and went, hello, hello, my old chap. Uh, 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 you wouldn't be able to help a fellow out, would you? And Momotaurus says, Sir, how, how may I help you? And the bee says, oh, it's been an awful morning. I was flying along, minding my own business, when then out of the forest came this big troll, and he just learned, spit, and squatted me out of the air. And now he's broken my wing. Look, broke. And he held up this broken wing. And Momo tore us a coat, that's awful. Um, uh, maybe I can help you. And the bee says, well, I don't know how you'll help me. My wing is broken, unless you can fix my wing. And Momo says, Toro said, I think I can. Uh, wait, wait, just a minute. He was a smart boy, was Momo Toro. He went over and he found a tiny, tiny branch just to fit the size of the wing and he put it on like this and then he went over to a tree and you know that sap that grows in the trees you know the, it's like a gluey kind of a sap he used that like it was a glue and he put it on to the bee's wing and the bee was like oh oh that's rather clever and the bee went oh that's that's wonderful oh bravo and the bee went flying like this and next minute the bee went flying over to momotoro and he says thank you boy what, what's your name my name is Momotoro. You've been wonderful. Thank you so much for helping me. Uh, good day to you, sir. And it flew off. And Momotoro walked on a little bit further. Except this time he found a tree that had been ripped out of the ground and the branches were ever, the leaves were all over the place. And as he was walking by, suddenly he heard another voice. And this voice said, Hello? And Momotoro turned around and he said, 
and he walked over and he saw that what he was looking at, what was saying hello, was actually a chestnut with a face on it. And he picked it up and says, mum, mum, he, 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 you're a talking chestnut. Yes, yes I am, yes. Uh, what, 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 what happened? And the chestnut said, oh, we were just hanging out of our tree having a, you know, a great morning. And suddenly that troll came along and ripped the tree out of the ground and shook us all this way and that way. Now, look, I'm not even attached to a tree anymore. Would you be, would you be willing to take me along, would you? Momotora said, y yes, yes, of course. So he put the chestnut into his pocket like this, and they walked on. Now at this point, Momotora noticed that around him, the forest had got very quiet because this was a part of the mountain that none of the animals would come near. This was near the lair of the troll. And as he walked along, Momotoro's heart began to beat like this. Boom, boom. Actually, everyone do this with your chest. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, boom, 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 boom. And it was going like this. And Momotoro walked on until he came out past the bush. And there in front of him, there was a small pool with a waterfall. And behind the waterfall, there was a cave. And around the edges of the water, there was bones of skulls and animals that the troll had eaten over the years. And the cave was, of course, the lair of the troll. And Momotoro went out, and he stood by the water's edge, and he took out his branch, and he waved it like this, and he put his helmet like this, his, his saucepan, and he went, I challenge you. I want you all to help me with that one. Say it with me. One, two, three. I challenge you! Oh, we'll try it again. One, two, three. I challenge you! And suddenly there was a... And the water. Have you ever seen Jurassic Park? Seen the Jurassic Park? You know that bit with the, with the dinosaur approaching the ripples in the water? It was kind of like that. The pool began to ripple. And next minute, through the waterfall, came this huge, ugly, wart-covered, mushroom-covered foot. And it came out. And next minute came this huge pot belly. It was all blue and purple and it was stinky. It came out. And next minute came the lower chin of the troll. And the troll's eyes came out like this. And he came out, he was ready to fight whatever warrior had come up here to challenge him. Who dared to come and challenge the mighty troll of the mountain? And the troll stepped out and he says, Who dares challenge I? I am the troll of the... And he looked down, expecting to see a warrior in knight, you know, in armor and swords and weapons and all this kind of stuff. But instead, he was looking at a boy, seven years old, with a saucepan on his head and waving a branch in his hand. And the troll looked at him and he went, You, you challenge me? Yes, I, I challenge you. you you challenge me? You! <laughs> you! Oh, oh, let me guess, let me guess. The saucepan, it's not a saucepan, is it? It's the saucepan. Oh, let me guess. It's your helmet, is it? It is, it's, it's a helmet. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> and oh, and the branch. Oh, let me guess. The branch. It's not a branch, is it? You think? Let me guess. It's a spear or something. No, it's 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 a sword. It's a sword. <laughs> it's, it's a sword. 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 He's got a helmet and a sword. You idiot! You dare to challenge me? I'm the troll of the mountain. You challenge me to a saucepan on your head and a branch in your hand. Come here, and he reached forward and he scooped Momotoro up into his arms like this. Uh, uh, and before Momotoro could do anything, he was crushed in the arms of the of the, the hand of the troll. The troll held him up like this. You fool! You dare come challenge me? It has been a while since I have eaten a boy, and today I am very hungry. And he turned around and he brought Momotoro into his cave. And he walked into, he walked into, are you okay? Are you okay? No, you, sorry, sorry. You look a bit nervous. He looks a bit nervous, uh, you're you right. Yeah? Just remember, it's, 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 it's only a story. 
It's only a story. None of this is actually happening. He, he, looks, he looks a bit nervous. Okay. You're all right too, are you? Sorry, because you're smiling, but your eyes are actually kind of like... They're kind of, they're kind of, kind of scared. No, it's, it's only a story. None of this is actually happening, okay? Okay. Sorry, I'm just a bit... Sorry, I just have to keep a... Okay. We, we don't want to have an accident here. We don't have anyone have a heart attack because they got scared or something. It's only a story. Okay. So actually, let's just try... Actually, guys, if you get nervous, can you just give him a hug? No? No. Could you give her a hug? Yeah? Okay, okay. Do you feel better? Yeah? Okay, there you go. Wonderful. If that doesn't work, listen, I'll tell you what. If that doesn't work, I'll get your teacher to give you a hug. Is that right? You want to get a hug off the teacher in front of everyone, all the class? No, no, he doesn't want it. No. <laughs> okay, and if that doesn't work, look, if that doesn't work, there is one last thing you can do. You can just do the whole, you know, <laughs> and run out of the building. You can do that if you need to. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to continue. But before I continue, I want to just check that you're okay. You're all right, and you're okay. You feel better after the hug, I'm sure. Okay, so at this point, the story's going to get a bit scary. That's why I'm watching you. All right. So at this point, Momotoro was dragged into the cave, and he was struggling in the hands of the troll like this. Ah, ah, ah. And the troll was like, yes, yes. And as he walked into the cave, he saw that there was a cauldron in the cave with a little fire underneath it. And beside the cauldron, there was a bucket with some water. And over in the corner, there was an old cow. The troll hadn't got around to eating them yet. Moo. And over in the corner, there was a couple of sheep that were still alive. Nah. And there was all the fish and some vegetables and stuff. And the troll went in and he got Momotoro like this and he threw him down on the floor in the corner of the room. And as he threw him down, the saucepan went flying off his head and rolled across the floor. And the branch went flying out of his hand. And Momotoro came up to his feet like this. And as he stood up, he was like... <sighs> He had nothing. He had no defenses, no weapons, no nothing. The troll looked at him and says, Yes, I'm going to enjoy eating you, boy. I'll eat you slowly. I think first thing I'll take your arm. Yes, or maybe your leg. Yes, your leg looks better. I'll start with your legs. You don't need them. You won't be going anywhere. The moment troll was like, bub, 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 bub. And the troll turned around. But first, I will heat the fires. And he went back and he put some coal onto the fire underneath the cauldron. But before he did that, he went over and he washed his hands because he was a very health-conscious troll. He washed his hands in a bucket of water. Yes, I'm looking forward to eating you, boy. And as Momotoro stood there, suddenly he heard a voice. And the voice said, Hello! And he looked down. And coming in sideways into the cave entrance was the crab. Momotoro, I see you're in trouble. I have come to help you. But, but how can you help me? You're only a small crab. Ah, I have a plan, Momotoro. And he looked around like this. The next minute he saw the bucket with the water. And he went over and the crab got into the bucket. And he sat down into the bucket. And Momotoro said, but how is that going to help me? Hello, Momotoro. I heard you in the spot of bother. I've come to help you, said the bee. He says, but how can you help me? Oh, it's quite simple. I'm just going to fly over here. And the bee went over and disappeared into the corner, into the shadows. And Momotoro's like, but how is that going to help me? Momotoro. Momotoro. And he reached into his pocket and he took out the chestnut. And the chestnut looked up at him and says, Momotoro, quickly, I have come to help you. But how can you help me? You don't even have arms or legs. Ah, but I have a brain, Momotoro. Quickly, do as I say. Roll me onto the fire underneath the cauldron. What? Just do it, Momotoro, quickly, while the troll isn't looking. So Momotoro went like this, and he rolled the chestnut. And the chestnut rolled across the floor. And as it rolled across the floor, the troll was like this. The troll turned around and brought down his foot and barely missed the chestnut. The chestnut rolled on until it sat in the fire underneath the cauldron. And Momotoro's like, but how is that going to help? And suddenly the troll turned around. Yes! Now! That's nice and warm now, boy. Now, let's say, yes, I was going to start with your legs. Yes, and suddenly a voice came. And the voice said, Hey, you! You big ninja boop! Huh? The troll turned around, saying, where, where, where was this voice coming from? Yeah, you, you big smelly fart! He turned around and said, Who's saying that? Who dares say that in my cave? Yeah, I do, you, 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 big, you, big, you, big, you big green snot, you! Whoa! How dare you? Where are you? Where are you? Over here, in the fire! And it was a chestnut. And the troll went over. You? 
you dare to say such things to me? And he reached down and he picked the chestnut from the hot fire and he held it up. You dare to say such things? I will crush you. I will crush you like a bu uh, Oh. And the chestnut looked up at him and went, Yeah, I'm kind of hot, aren't I? <laughs> and he threw him up in the air. Without even thinking, he got him in the other hand. <laughs> and began doing this and juggling him like this. <laughs> and eventually he kind of realized, okay, this isn't working. I better get rid of the chestnut. And he threw the chestnut to one side and it smashed off the wall. Didn't get broken, but just rolled down the wall. And the troll was like this. <laughs> and he ran over to his bucket and he put his hands into the bucket. And as he put his hands into the bucket, what was in the bucket? Everyone, put your hands like this. And give me a big, nasty snap here now. One, two, three. Try it again, try it again. One, two, three. Ah! Ah! And this crab was hanging off the edge of his finger. And the crab was like, hello. Ah! And he was trying to shake the crab off his finger like this. He was winging it this way and winging it that way. But it wasn't working. It wasn't getting loose. And eventually he gave it one big mighty flick. And the crab went flying across and hit into the wall. And the troll was like, oh, 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 oh. And the bee looked at him and said, hello. And then the bee got its stinger and it went, ding. <laughs> and he got up again and the bee went flying across and went to the other side. <laughs> and Momotor didn't know what was going on. And the, the troll was like, ah, oh, holding his ears, holding his burnt hands. He went like this. Oh. And Momotor spotted his moment. He ran forward. And he picked up the branch that was on the ground. And he held it up like this in both hands. And he held it over his arm like this, like he was playing baseball. Everyone give me a good swing here now. One, two, Three. That's not a good swing. Give me a good swing. Come on. You must do this in school. Exercise. Hurling or something. One, two, three. Oh, said the troll as he fell forward towards the entrance of the cave. And what happens if trolls fall into the sunlight? Does anyone know? They turn to stone. And he fell forward towards the entrance of the cave and stopped. He did not fall out outside the sunlight he, f he stopped just inside the door and he turned around and he said is that the best you can do boy I'm going to enjoy making you suffer and Momotoro looked down and he saw that the branch was broken he'd hit him so hard it broke the branch and he was like <laughs> he saw a saucepan he ran over <laughs> he put it on his head like this he ran on his head like this <laughs> and he ran <laughs> And he ran straight into the knee of the troll, and the troll went, ah, and fell back towards the entrance of the cave, but did not fall out into the sunlight. And Momotoro was like, oh my god, oh my god. And the creature came forward and says, I'm going to enjoy eating you, boy. Yes. And now Momotoro's saucepan was kind of half broken, the branch was broken, he had nothing else left. And the troll reached up with his hands like this, for bear to be crushed, boy. <laughs> The first rays of sunlight were creeping over the hill and they went up along the arm and the arm began to turn to stone. <laughs> I still have my other arm, boy. Oh, I still have my mouth. I don't see. And Momotoro watched as the whole body of the troll began to turn gray like stone. And he went forward like this and he held out his little finger and he pushed at the troll's knee. And the troll went uh, uh, And the troll fell back out the entrance and rolled until he came to a cliff. And he fell down the cliff, falling, 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 falling. In the village, the villagers were out cutting grass. Because today they're gonna make grass potatoes. I don't even know how that works, but they're gonna have grass potatoes for dinner. So we're doing this. And they looked up because they heard a scream coming down the mountain. They heard a, oh, and they looked over and they saw this huge shape falling down the cliff of the mountain. Oh, and as it hit the ground, it made a huge boom. I want you all to give me the best boom you can. One, two, three, boom. That's really pathetic. Let's do another one again. One, two, three. He can do better than that. How often do you get to be this loud? One, two, three. And the ground shook. The ground shook. I want you all to like shake because the ground is shaking from the explosion. 
And the villagers ran through the forest. They were like, what's going on? What's, what was that? And they went out and they found the head of the troll was smashed. The body of the troll was smashed. There was nothing. There was just bits of rock everywhere. And they realized that the troll was gone. And they were like, he's gone. He's gone. And next minute they looked over. And through the forest, through the bushes, was coming a shape. And this shape had a, well, it had a broken branch in its hand. It had a kind of a crooked, busted helmet on its head, saucepan. And it was also carrying all the fish, one cow, moo, and two sheep that were still alive. Bah. And they looked over and they realized that this was Momotoro. And they ran forward, all the villagers, Momotoro, Momotoro, they ran forward, and they lifted them up onto their shoulders. Actually, I want you all to like, pretend you're like the villagers. You all want to go, Momotoro, Momotoro. And lift him up under your shoulders, lift him up under your shoulders. Momotoro, and he was like, oh, oh, thank you, thank you. You're alive, Momotoro, you're alive. The parents came out, and they could not believe, because they, they were sure that he, he was dead. And they came out, and there he was alive, and the troll was slain. They ran forward like this, Momotoro, oh, it is fantastic. And they held him up. And of course, Momotoro was held up as a hero to the village. And all their food was back, and the troll was gone. And how do you finish stories? What's that line you finish stories with? Perfect. So let's everyone do that line together. And they lived. Is that the best you can do with that line? Come on, let's try again. And they lived. No, that's, uh, guys, can I ask, do you do like drama at school? Do you do drama at school? Your teachers do drama? Very good. Do you do it a lot? No. Here, can you come up here for a second? Come up here. Tui, come on. Come up here for a second. Okay. Okay, we might have done this before. We're going we're gonna to try this. Okay, hold on. Listen, we have to finish this story right, and they're a bit lackluster there at the end there, and it wasn't the best happily ever after. So we're gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you, and you can teach them. Sorry, guys, just, just for a second. We're just going to teach your teachers. So can you just hold your hands up like this? Put your hands up like this. And then can you say, um, uh, to, to be or not to be? To be or not to be. See what I'm talking about? This is what you're looking This is brilliant. Okay, let's do it. Let's go, let's go again. Let's go again. To be or not to be. That is the question. That is the question. Whether it is noble. Where are you? You've lost me completely. <laughs> Whether it is noble or. Do you not know these bits? Do you not know your Shakespeare? Okay, no, that's it. Right, so we're going to get you all to do it now with us. So everyone put your hands up like this. And first we'll do a bit of Shakespeare. To be or not to be. To be or not to be. Okay, now bearing in mind how you just said that, we're going to do. They lived happily ever after. Okay, one, two, three. And they lived happily ever after. Oh, it's very, look, she didn't even say a thing. She was like busy, like, okay, brilliant, 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 brilliant. Can you give them a round of applause to your teachers? Because they helped you. Can you give them a round of applause? Okay, okay. Right, guys, so we're going to kind of bring it to a, bring it to a finish there now in a, in a minute. So before we finish, before we finish out, yes, you got your hand up. Oh, I got a nosebleed. We, we've, we have an emergency over here. Okay. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed that. Can I ask you, are you all doing the summer reading challenge here at the moment? No? Yes? No? You are? Who else is doing the summer reading challenge? You are. You haven't bothered? No, you haven't done it? You're doing it? Yeah, you're doing it? Very good. Because there's a whole pile of events. You've got the folders. There's a whole pile of events on now today and tomorrow. So tell your parents. Maybe there's stuff here you can get into. But as well as that, there's a summer reading challenge. And you get to get out. I think you have to like read eight books. And there's a bunch of rewards and prizes for it. And uh, you've all been, you're all members of the library, are you? Yeah? No? Yes? Yes? So the library has a lot of stuff on all the time. Arts, crafts, music, all this kind of stuff. So if you sign up, you'll find out all about that kind of stuff. Now, what's next in your agenda today? What are you doing? You're doing a bit more of a walk around town, is that it? Very good. So before we finish, we're going to get you all to stand up. And we're just going to do this thing we always do. I do this at the end. You know this. You remember how this works, don't you? So you do this like this, like this. Then you put your hands up like this, like this. Then you put your hands out like this, and like this, and now you go like this, and go like this. And imagine you're directing a plane, and it doesn't know where the plane is going. It's Ryanair, they haven't a clue what they're at. And it goes this way and that way. All right, then put your hands together, and then I want you to go like this. And I want to say thank you to the library. Thank you, library. Thank you, teachers.
And finally, can we have no homework? No, I swear to you. Oh, it's no homework on a Friday. Oh, Jesus, that's a great school. That's a great school. Sorry, guys. I hope that was okay.